Um, so I thought I'd um, play around with this um, 555 circuit that was in uh, that was mentioned in this book called uh, Son of Tesla. Uh, this is an interesting book because it uh, talks about how Tesla uh, sort of moved away from those great big air coils and and was actually um, in his later years messing around with these oil coils that he made, which uh, were a lot safer and uh, he uh, carefully constructed. And this book kind of talks about that, but um, in here there's a um, circuit for a 555 uh, timer driven uh, automotive coil, ignition coil, and uh, I, I think the key is, um, is you know, this is sort of a digital uh, square wave coming out of this thing, but you want to uh, separate the voltages that, that are AC from it, because uh, that would really mess mess up the 555. So um, you use these uh, RFC chokes um, on the positive and negative rails coming into the 555 timer. And um, so I've uh, try attempted to replicate this, get a 555 timer. I um, picked a capacitor and resistors to make it, um, uh, and, and I have a potentiometer here to make it so that you can um, dial in a frequency from somewhere between 1 and 5 kilohertz. The, the coil seems to be happy at around 4 kilohertz as a, as a resident frequency. And um, the, the nice thing about uh, being able to control the frequency is you can find the resonance. Uh, Self-resonance is good, but, but be able to sort of force the resonance you want, for, force the frequency that you want to sort of find that resonance is useful, especially when you're sort of changing the output side of this, uh, 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 changing what's, what the inductance is on the uh, secondary, or changing the equations on the secondary. Um, so let me turn this thing on. Uh, I've got this uh, spark gap. I get. Here you see it's running uh, three CFLs. The CFLs are hooked up in series. Um, they're wired over to the ground. Uh, to the ground, and the hot, uh, high voltage lead is also wired over to ground. Sometimes the spark uh, stops, especially if I uh, move around physically in the room. A little slower frequency can work. Um, I'll zoom in on the spark here. These are just two brass knobs put in a, like a little plastic box so that you can adjust their distances. Brass works really good. Tesla had talked about uh, using brass. He also talked about using uh, magnets to, uh, to quelch the spark. And um, one thing I find is uh, you know, when you have sort of this sparking, uh, when you have the spark gap here, um, the load on the coil is a lot le less. It seems to, uh, the, the battery doesn't drain down as fast, so there seems to be pretty low current. I, um, it's hard for me to measure the current draw with a digital meter. I don't want to mess up my meter. There's just, a, again, AC all over the place. So even though I have a, a, a choke, um, in here, uh, you can sort of see uh, on either side of the choke, there's AC, and um, coming over here to the uh, power supply to the 555, there's there's AC. So the AC the AC is still getting through. I, probably need to protect the 555 a little bit better, but it seems to be sort of working. Um, another trick is if you put a capacitor here with the spark gap and play around with various values of the capacitor, the larger the capacitance value, the larger the spark you can get, and the frequency uh, goes... Um, it seems like there's a wider range of frequencies where this works at.
Another thing is I think I think uh, the scratchier the sound of the tone and going across the spark, the closer you are to res resonance. There's there's all these spurious sparks. So if I go above resonance here, it's not very scratchy. Come to that down to that scratchy place right there. That's right around where resonance is. The lights get the brightest at that point. So um, there's also a diode here. Uh, so the back EMF from this primary coil, when it's pulsing the opposite direction, goes across a diode directly into the plus of the battery, char charging it again. So all of the uh, back EMF pulses are recaptured back in the battery. So the battery is sort of emitting 50% uh, of its duty cycle is uh, it emitting a pulse, and then there's a pulse that comes back to the battery. So the chemistry in the battery is sort of zooming back and forth. If you could find the resonant frequency of the battery in terms of sort of its optimum charging frequency, then uh, then you might be able to uh, keep the battery uh, so that it hardly sees a load at all, essentially. It's sort of um, all the energy it gives is given back to it. Okay, bye. Thank <laughs> you.